Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the Top Hat Sophisticate that's on this side here of the screen. And what this is is that it's a fabulous top hat and back in 2013 I filmed this one. This one was not yet out when I filmed this one. I've had so much fun with these hats and you have no idea. So we've done contests. We had Alice in Wonderland with these hats because the hats provide a great base structure for applying anything that you would like to do. So we had a Mad Hatter contest and there was 300 hats completed with just people decorating the hats in a different way with other crochet and mixed media and it was a lot of fun. So this pattern that eventually came out and I really like the simplicity. I love the band but I actually thought the band that you saw here was part of the hat. So I've kinda like okay I'm not gonna film that because that's gonna be really complex. What I didn't know until just minutes ago is that this is actually a band instead of having a black band like you see here. This band here is actually applied just like this one. So what my goal today is that I'm going to demonstrate this hat again. So the the original video will be then just spliced up because the base structure is the same. When we get to the band I'm going to show you how to do the band of this and then I'm going to bring it back into there because how you're gonna close it and attach it to your hat is the same. So it's almost cheating in the sense that it's two patterns that are very very close to each other but they have a completely different look and this you know New Year's I can see that that'd be kind of fun or any kind of costume party and etc. And of course you just change the design you could do like a leprechaun for uh, um, St. Patty's Day and etc. So let's uh, get started. I'm going to be playing this tutorial as a, in a moments from now and then when we come to the band I'll show you how to do this next. To get started we're gonna be using two strands of yarn together just like you see. We're just gonna put them together. Pretend that they're one. You should know that you need at least 90% of a full ball of yarn to pull this off. So if you got stash, uh, stash yarn and you got odds and balls lying around you need at least 90% of a full ball left before you can actually finish this hat. So just be very aware of this. This is an adult size. I do not know what the calculations are to make this in child size. So just that you're aware of that as well. So let's uh, begin and uh, we're gonna create a slip knot. And there are slower tutorials available for learning how to crochet on redheart.com as well as the crochetcrowd.com. And this is your slip knot. So here we go. It says with two strands held together, which is this, and A means the color as you see. It says with the larger hook, and that's five and a half millimeter or a size I hook. That's what we have. It says chain four and then join with a slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring. So this never counts as one. So we got one, two, three, and four. Like so and we want to go to the very beginning like this. The very beginning chain. Grab the yarn and pull it through and this will be the really tight ring that's in the inside just like so. So let's begin round number one. Round number one it says work eight single crochets into the ring. So we have the ring we want to put eight single crochets in the inside. So we're just gonna immediately stick the hook through the center of the ring. These are the two stragglers. Just leave those out, out on top and those will get buried in. So we just want a total of eight. So one, two, three, and this is four. And these stragglers I'm gonna let just hang out now. So that was four. So this is five, six, seven, and eight. And now this is where I want you to get your stitch marker out. On the eighth one right there we want to put in a stitch marker so that we know that that is the final stitch of the revolution. So every time I say you gotta replace your st um, stitch you just put it so you see that it's on the hook. So we go to run right under it. Okay so not the loop that's on the hook but the one right underneath it and we put that in. So that begin that finishes off round number one. Round number two now is work two single crochets into each stitch and then it gives you a combination of 16 single crochets. So we immediately just go to the very first stitch and make sure that you are grabbing both of the strings that you have because you are using two sets of yarn here and we just want to single crochet twice into each stitch going around. Okay so that was one and two. The next stitch one and two like so. So you just want to keep going all the way around back to the stitch marker right here and I'll meet you back up there in just a second where we'll carry on. Now as promised here is the very last stitch that we have and we simply just want to remove the stitch marker out. So I'm just going to open it up 
So this is how you would do it every time. And then so that would be the last stitch and so we're working with two single crochets in each stitch and that's the last one. So after you've finished the very last one which is the second one, we put the stitch marker right back in so that we know. If you have kept your count for the entire project, your, your final stitches will always work out and be balanced at this point. So just always move that crochet stitch marker up. So let's move along to round number three. In round number three, what we're gonna be doing is single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next and you wanna carry that same combination all the way around. So the first stitch is one single crochet and then the next stitch is two single crochets. One and two. Okay, so the next one is one single crochet. And the next one will be two. So carry on that same thing. So one single crochet in the first, two single crochets in the next. Carry that all the way to the stitch marker and we'll meet back there in just a second and carry on. We're coming all the way back around. Your next tip here is right on this, this last one right here. So we've been doing one single crochet, two single crochets, one single crochet, two single crochet. If your math is done right, the, the final stitches will be one single crochet and the one in the stitch marker will always be the double always, always, always. That's if your stitch counts are right. Okay, so there will be two single crochets in here. So you're gonna be noticing that we're gonna carry along on this whole project where we're doing single crochets in a row and then putting two in once in a while and you will notice that the very final one will always be the double if your stitches are maintaining their counts properly. So let's uh, move along to round number four. Round number four we have single crochet in the next two stitches and then two single crochets into the next. So this is moving up one. So we're gonna do the first two single crochets. So the first two stitches are single crochets and the next one is where there's gonna be two. Okay, so just, so you want, so what I do in my own brain is that I go one, two, okay. So that was two single crochets in a row and then I say, and then I put in my double. So I don't really honestly count the double when I'm counting it in my brain so I'm ready to start that configuration again. So I go one, two and then the next one I know has to be a double. So I put two single crochets. Carry that uh, same pattern all the way around. Meet back up at the stitch marker. We'll carry along to round number five. So we're coming all the way back around and the final will again be one and then the next one will be two and then again on the final. You should know that off camera actually I made a mistake and I was about to film and I realized that I had one stitch left over. So I realized that because I wasn't ending up with two at the very end stitch marker that I had miscounted at some point. So it's a great opportunity for you to have a kind of a milestone to know what to look for in order to keep your stitch counts proper. Um, it will change your um, sizing if you don't uh, keep your counts properly. So let's move along and we're gonna go on to round number five. Round number five is easy. It's three single crochets in a row and then two singles into the next. So again, just like we did. So in my brain, I'm gonna go one single crochet and then I'm gonna go to the next one for two and then the next one for three and then the, so then the next one is my double. So I just automatically put my two in there. So I just count one, two and three and then put in my double. So let's begin that one more time. So I go one, two and three. So the next one is my double. So I put two single crochets into there. So continue that around to the stitch marker. We'll meet back up in just a second. So we're just coming up to round number five, finishing it off and the last one will be two singles in there, just like that. And let's put our stitch marker back up and let's move on to round number six next. Now round number six is when it starts to do, if you've seen the top of the hat in the photos that you'll see that it will dip down and this is what is causing this. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're still gonna be growing at the hat but every few lines we're actually gonna make it so that's just single crochets around which causes the dip on the top of the hat. So it makes it actually shape just right. So in round number six we're just gonna simply just go all the way around back to the stitch marker for just single crochet. So one single crochet into every stitch going all the way around and that'll complete round number six. So let's meet back up in a second and we'll carry on to round number seven. Okay, and just finishing up round number six, just removing up the stitch marker, putting in my final stitch 
and stitch marker back in. So that was round number six. Let's move along to round number seven. And in round number seven it says single crochet into the fourth and two four stitches, two single crochets into the next. So this is just like we have been doing all along. So the first four, so we're gonna have one and the next stitch is gonna be one. This is three and four and then the next one will be two uh, single crochets together. So this is a, like a four to one ratio. So how do I count it in my brain is that I go one and then I go two, three and then four and now the next one will be the double. So continue that same configuration all the way around to the stitch marker. We'll meet back up in a second and finish off round number seven. So just finishing off round number seven just removing out the stitch marker. Final stitch has two singles in it as per the configuration. Let's put our stitch marker back in. Hopefully your counts are staying right as well. <laughs> Don't put the stitch marker around the crochet hook because that won't help you. And let's move along and we are going to round number eight and you will notice that the, see how it's starting to dip in? That's exactly what you're looking for. So if your hat is still flat you know something's completely wrong and it could go the other way depending on the way you're holding it but it should dip down. So what we have is round number eight single crochet into each stitch. So this is like round number six and again this is helping to create that dipping. So each stitch all the way around is one single crochet. So continue to do that all the way around to the stitch marker. Make sure you do grab two strings in, in your stitches because it will be noticeable and one single crochet all the way around to the stitch marker and we'll be back up and finish off round number eight. Okay let's finish off round number eight. We're just going to take out the stitch marker. Last one, one single crochet because that's what it was. Put the stitch marker back in. Voila. And it's just an easy way to keep count. So that's number eight. Let's move along to round number nine. Round number nine says single crochet five sing, uh, stitches in a row and then double in the next. So let's begin. So we're gonna go five this time. So one, two, three, four, and five and now the next one will be two single crochets. So continue that same process. I think you're getting it at this point. So one, two, three, four, five, double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, double crochet all the way around back to the stitch marker. Okay, just finishing up round number nine, taking out the stitch marker. The last one is two singles in there. Put the stitch marker back in. And my counts are still continuing to be perfect by the way. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, so let's move along to round number 10. Round number 10 we have um, single crochet into the next six stitches and then double in the next. So again just like we've done before. So this time it's six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so then this next one is a double. So continue to do that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six and then double and carry that around all the way back to the stitch marker. Okay, I'm finishing up round number 10, taking out the stitch marker. The last one will have two uh, single crochets in it and then I replace the stitch marker back in and that completes round number 10. So we're whipping along pretty good on this thing. Off camera it's not taking me a lot of time at all. So don't let the camera times in between the filming. <laughs> uh, confuse you to think that this is a longer project than it is. So what we have now is round number 11 it says to single crochet into each stitch around. So we begin again. So we're just going to single crochet into every stitch all the way around back to the stitch marker. So let's move back up in a second where we'll have that complete. So I'm just finishing up round number 11 and it's one single crochet into each. So I'm going to single crochet the final one and put the stitch marker back in. And we're going to begin round number 12 so round number 12 is just really quite simple. It's we've already kind of doing it already before. So this time what we want to do is uh, seven single crochets in a row and then a double. So we just begin again. So we're just going to count to seven. So one, two, I'm going to have to flip it the other way. That's two, three, four, five, six, and seven just like so. So the next one then will be a double like that. So let's do that again. So we're going to continue that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then a double and then that will keep doing that and that will take you back to the stitch marker again. So carry on and we'll meet back up in just a second. So coming all the way back around the final one will have two 
single crochets inside. I've already taken out the stitch marker in this case and we just wanna carry on. So that was round number 12. Put the stitch marker back in. So round numbers 13 through 16 now are all gonna be the same. This is what's gonna create the bowl shape going up over the top. So if you look at the top of the hat, just like C, so you have the bowl shape that will come around the top and then back around. This is what is this step is going to be at this particular point. So let's carry on. So what we're gonna be doing right away is that we're gonna start off now with a, sick, with a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So every time you get back to the stitch marker you wanna count that as a round. So single crochet and you wanna do lines number 13, 14, 15, and 16. So you wanna do four rounds in order to do this. So just continue to single crochet now for four rounds, count it every time you pass the stitch marker and be sure to move that up in order to keep your counts proper. I've now completed round number 16 and you should be caught up at this point if you're carry on and now it looks like a big bowl for uh, fruit. So what I need you to do now is you're thinking to yourself, God that doesn't look right. What you wanna do is you wanna turn it upside down at this point and you just wanna push down the center like so. So there is the very top of your hat. So that's how this hat works is that the, the middle depresses just like this. And so this is round number 16. So when we're going to crochet it now, you'll see that it looks like that. So because we're using two yarns like so, um, it is a very easy, it makes it stiff. And this, you can see that it's gone over the top of the hat and now we're about to go down. So this is the widest part of the top of the hat and now we start to decrease as we go along. So let's move along and we're now uh, completed round number 16. So we did four uh, continuous rounds uh, off camera and now let's move along to round number 17 next. In round number 17, we now start to do a single together decrease. Okay, so it sing, uh, says SC2 uh, together, TOG. So what we're gonna be doing now in this one here is that it says single crochet in the next seven stitches and then single two together. So what we're doing now is we're starting to create the, so it's gonna get narrower as we go along. So let's uh, begin uh, this round. So we're gonna do seven. So seven single crochets in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and so now this is the next two uh, single crochets are going to go together. So we're just going to slip in our hook, pull the yarn through, leave it on the hook, go into the very next one. So you have three and you pull through all three. So that's a two together, um, single crochet two together. So carry along. So just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then the next two will be together just like I just showed you. So carry on for round number 17. Doing that way we'll be back up at the stitch marker once more. So we're just finishing up round number 17 and what we have here is I wanna show you a tip. So the final two stitches will be the two together. Okay, so if you ended up uh, with just at the stitch marker and you still have to do your two together, you're gonna go the stitch marker and beyond. So you wanna make sure that the stitch before and then the stitch marker here is the final stitch. So you just wanna put those together. Just like so, I'm gonna remove that out. And that helps you, uh, again, keep your balance if you can see what you're doing. So when every time you're doing two together on these particular rounds, the final two should be left out empty in order for you to do so. So let's move along. We're gonna go to round number 18 and 19. Those are simply just single crochet just like you've done in row numbers 13 to 16. So carry on and we're simply just gonna start off single crochet and go twice around for rounds number 18 and 19 and be sure to count it when you pass the particular stitch marker just like so. So we're back again and I finished rows number, or rounds number 18 and 19. So there's where we are again at the stitch marker. So let's begin round number 20 and round number 20 we're gonna do another decrease just like we've already done before. So let's uh, begin again. So it says single crochet in the six stitches and then two together. So again let's carry on. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like you see. And so the next two will belong together. So we're gonna do a together stitch, single together, like so, 
and bring it together. So can it carry on that same pattern? So one, two, three, four, five, six, two together, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two together. Carry on and we'll finish off round number 20 together. This will be the very last time you're ever decreasing in this hat. And you can see that it's starting to pull the bull shape on the top of the top hat too. So it's pretty exciting at this point. So it's really starting to take shape as of this moment. So let's uh, begin uh, to finish off this round. We'll meet back up in just a second. So we come all the way back around again just like before the final two stitches should be your two together as if you're following the pattern properly. So no big deal. So I do have the final two stitches happens to work out knock on wood. I'm really excited about that too. <laughs> you have no idea. So then I've got to put in my stitch marker one more time. So here we go for the rounds number 21 all the way to 32 it's the same thing. You're going to notice the hat will continue to come in a little bit smaller. So don't be worried about the size being too big at this point. The next uh, many many rows will actually begin to make it more narrow. So essentially what we have at this point if you turn the hats upside down is that this here you can see where we are. So we're going to be going all these whole rounds now all the way to the top here to till we get to the band on going mm -hmm. from rows number 21 to all the way to 32. So on a piece of paper what I would do if I were you is that I would write down these rows numbers 21 all the way through 32 and as you pass each row you just simply just want to check it off as you go along. So off camera I've been doing that all along with this thing. I've been checking off my stitches as I've been going along. So do that rows number 21 to 32 just single crochet all the way around. Be sure to move the stitch marker every time you do so. So let's move back up where we're going to start the brim on row number round number 33. And we're back in rounds number 21 to 32 are now complete on the sample that we've been working on for this tutorial. And now as per the instructions we're going to start round number 33 and we're going to start the brim. So I want to tell you a little bit about this brim before we get started. This brim is really unusual because you will notice that when you're going to do it you're going to think this is not a brim and you have to trust the pattern that it's going to work and trust me it works. It's just you're going to start second guessing yourself and going to say this is not working for me. So what I want to tell you here is that this hat is very unusual. Usually with hats that we normally do when we do a brim you can say okay this round yes is for sure the brim. This hat doesn't work this way. This hat what it does is it gets wider at the bottom and then it naturally wants to fold up to create the perfect brim just like you see here. So it's a very unusual pattern that's why you have to stick with it. And so I guess let's stop talking and let's start working on doing the brim aspect of this hat. So let's begin round number 33. We are doing the brim as we speak. So it says single crochet in the next six stitches and then two single crochet in the next. So at this point we're going to start making this get wider. So we've been going the same uh, size for the rows 21 to 32 but now it's time to make it bigger. So let's uh, begin the process to do that. So round number 33 so it's six. So the we're going to put in a single crochet to the first six. So one, two and the angle is a little tough for me just so you're aware of it. So that was three and this is four, five and six and simply at this point the next one is going to be two single crochets into the same one. So continue to do that all the way around. So go one, two, three, four, five, six and then the next one will have two um, single crochets together and then let's meet back up at the stitch marker once again. Move on to round number 34. So I'm coming all the way back around the stitch marker here again is like we had before the two single togethers will are two together inside sorry the two single crochets will be together in that last stitch. So if your math is working out the where the stitch marker was that's where you'll end up putting your last two single crochets into the same stitch. So let's uh, move along. We're going to go to round number 34 and it's simply this round we're just single crocheting. So we're just going to single crochet all the way around. No fancy stitch work. Let's meet back up at the stitch marker once again. So just single crochet all the way around. And coming back all the way around we have the final stitch. That's your single crochet because that's what we've been doing on this round and simply just put your stitch marker back. So we're ready for the next round. Here we go and it is round number 35. It says single crochet in the next seven 
uh, stitches and then two single crochets in the next. So I want to explain something to you. Normally in a brim hat that you would have that the brim would naturally fold back up onto itself. The way that the designer is doing this here is that the brim will fan out. So just like you see how it comes out just like so. So if this was a normal brim hat um, you were following just a regular winter hat this should be actually like folded up right against this edge but the way the designer's done it is that it will fan out and it will be perfect. So uh, you have to trust in the pattern to do so. So single crochet in the next seven stitches and then two singles are in the next. So I, again let's start again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so then the next one then will be two into the two single crochets into the same stitch. So that's how you would do that. So continue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then put two into the next. So I'll carry on and that'll be round number um, 35 as we continue. So we're finishing up round number 35. Again moving the stitch marker out and putting in your two single crochets into that one. That's your last stitch again and then putting your stitch marker back in. So we're now ready for the next round and round number 36 is simply just single crocheting all the way around. So simply just start up again and just single crochet into every stitch going all the way around and meet back up in just a second while we'll finish that off and move on to round number 37. So we're finishing up round number 36. Again the stitch marker is out putting it in and this was a single crochet going all the way around. So I bet you're thinking to yourself, Mikey, mine's not looking like a brim. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you need to trust me. It works out. So this is what mine looks like at this point. So you're thinking, oh my God, it doesn't look like a brim. Trust me, trust me, trust me, it does work out. So what we have now is round number 37. It says single crochet in the next eight single crochets in the next eight stitches I should say and then two singles in the next. So again just like we've been doing before so this time it's going to be eight. So we got single crochet that's one, we got two, three and you got four, five, six, seven and eight. And so the next one is two singles into the same one. Okay, so continue to, to do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the next one will be two singles inside that stitch. So carry along that same pattern. Let's meet back again at the stitch marker. Well, we'll carry on to round number uh, 38. So we're back all the way around and the final stitch will be two single crochets into that if your math is being done properly. Just like so. So let's move along and so that was really easy. So we only have a couple more rounds to go and then this uh, base of the hat is done. So what we have here is round number 38. We have a single crochet into each of these stitches. So let's uh, begin to do that. So here we go. So just uh, continue to single crochet all the way back around to the stitch marker and that will conclude number 38. Okay, we're coming all the way back around and we simply just take out the stitch marker again, replace it, it's single crochet. Okay, so let's move along to the next round and this is round number 39. We just have one more round after this and this is considered done. So what we have here says single crochet in the next nine stitches and then two singles in the next. So this is the very last time we're going to be increasing again and you will notice that your hat is starting to ball up in the front just like so and uh, that's perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. So th remember the answer for this one is nine. So nine singles in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so then the next one will be two singles in, a, in the same stitch. So do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the next one will be two in the same. So continue that back to the stitch marker once again. And we've come all the way back around and again the slip, sti slip marker is out, stitch marker. Two singles are going to be in the same hole. So let's, uh, that was round number 39. We just have our last one to go. Really simple one. Just simply a single crochet all the way back to the starting point 
uh, to the stitch marker again. So just a begin to single crochet and when we come back I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna show you how to hide your tail ends in because your hat is done and I bet you're thinking to yourself this does not look like the hat. Trust me you're not done yet. So let's uh, carry on. I'll meet you back up in just a second where we'll actually fasten this thing off and shape it. So I've come all the way back around and again your last stitch is the stitch marker and you can now permanently pull that out. You are on your last round here so we're just gonna slip stitch so we're just gonna do our final single crochet and what I would recommend at this point they don't say to do this but I would actually slip stitch twice and it will, what it does is it just brings it back into balance when you go like that. So let's uh, begin to um, I want to fasten in off my tails so I'm just gonna uh, cut a string maybe about two feet long, both strings actually, and I'm gonna grab my darning needle that I have on the side here and basically with this string here I want to be able to pull it up. So just pull up like this, so and now let's put these strings on a darning needle. Just I'm just pinching them together and putting it through like that. So simply what I want to do is that I want to tie this, uh, you know, get it to really be snug in there. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to come up under the stitch underneath just to kind of bring it around. Okay, so what I want to do is that I want to go into the direction I came from and I just want to slip it through. Okay, so it's just hidden. You don't see it coming out anywhere. It's just hidden underneath and I want to go about maybe, maybe about two inches. Okay, so you see it popping out on the other side and I want to pull that through. My friend Michelle showed me this technique the other day and I was really quite impressed with it. Okay, so simply now that you've gone that way I want you to go in to another part of it. I know it's kind of maybe tough to see but just go into another part and go back to where you've come from. So this is the ultimate way of hiding your tails. Okay, so we're going to come back the other way. Okay. Just want to pull it out a little bit and just go one more time. So we want to go into a different section than what we came out of and we want to go back. So we want to do a total of that three times and what that does is it, it really tightens everything in so you'll never see it. Okay, so simply at this point you can just grab your scissors and now cut the string and this way you will never see where you stopped and started. You can see the little, little bulge but now let's shape this hat and I'll be right back. So at this point this is what your hat looks like. It kind of looks like a bell shape. You got your top here and it comes down and you're thinking where is the rim? The rim right now is just that we want to fold this up like so. And we want to go all the way around just like so. So there is the rim so far and so now we just want to straighten out the rest of it. It's nice and flat and voila there is your hat so far. So you can see the rim is being perfect and at the top you want to make sure you have the perfect indentation. So you just want to kind of push it out. Now this is a really thick yarn so you can really um, play with it to really give it some shape. So at this point in the tutorial you've got your base structure hat done. So I played the other video if you're watching me now and I have the the band here and it's just a matter of repeating a matter of rows two and three once you get going which is creating this concept. So if you want a solid band don't worry about the color changing and if you want the fun kind of ideas that's what I'm about to demonstrate. So you'll be using your five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. You need two colors in order to make this concept and let's begin. So let's begin with the band and we're going to just chain a total of 10 to get ourselves started. So just choose any of the one of the two colors that you want to do. So one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So second chain from the hook with the same color go in the back part of the chain and just single crochet yourself all the way across. So this is row number one. There will be a repeating of rows number two and three once we get this puppy going and we will be switching on and off with their two colors at the same time of each other. So just single crochet all the way back. And we're gonna start with this main color that we are using right now to begin row number two. So all the way back and turn your work and let's get our secondary color ready and begin. 
So I've got my secondary color ready. I'm just gonna go with the obvious yellow because it's really obvious. And we're gonna just chain up one and we're going to single crochet in the first um, sing, uh, first stitch. But remember when we change color in mid section like this we're gonna pull through and we need to have the new color ready to finish this. Remember that when you pull through like that the next stitch is the roof like the next pull through is the roof of the next stitch. So if you look at it from this perspective you're gonna do yellow underneath but this has to be the roof of the house. So you're going to be switching back and forth with this particular concept of just doing this. So with the yellow now we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. You need to have your purple just laying on top of the line like this and carry it underneath. So you're gonna double crochet like that so this is gonna require patience. So you'll pull through and pull through two and we're going to change the color back to A. So you have to drop the yellow and bring up the purple to finish that because remember what I said that loop is the roof of the next stitch. And in the next stitch you're gonna let your purple just fall down on top of the line. Sorry you're gonna let your yellow fall down on the top of the line and you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. So remember with these yellows here you're double crocheting and with the purple you're single crocheting. And now I can't finish that I need to switch it back to yellow to finish that because it's the roof of the next stitch. Let the purple stay on top of the line and double crochet in and drop. And so the trick is when you drop you don't want to have these strands tangle with each other and of course you could just unspin it if you have to. Okay, so let everything go and let's come down. So if it's purple it's dropping in. Put that yellow on top of the line and then grab the yellow to finish it and then double crochet in the next. You will get hopefully you will get used to doing this. It's just a matter of getting more comfortable. I just started doing this so I'm a little rusty at the moment. But the trick is is not to have these yarns twist. and you're gonna go all the way to the other side. So yes it will take time but you know Rome was never built in a day and this is one of those items that make it look really cool in the end. So you're gonna come all the way to the end like that and then you're going to single crochet in the last and take that yellow with you at to the very end so that you can carry it up. So now I'm at the end I wanna turn my work my goal is, is to get this yellow back to the other side so we're gonna take it with us. So you're gonna chain up one and on row number three we're using the same color and we're going to crochet right up over top of that yellow to take it with us and we are going to then just single crochet ourselves all the way across. So make sure that yellow is taut so you're pulling on it and it's got no slack in it. So what I would do is just zoom your way across like this and then just every now and then just give it a bit of a pull to make sure you get the slack out and then you'll be ready for row number two again. So you at least you got a break every other line right. So then you're gonna turn your work and begin row number two again. So if it's tangled like this just unspin it. Takes two seconds. So you're gonna start off with your purple so you're doing row number two and get that yellow into position underneath and single crochet and then you're gonna switch it to yellow to finish. And remember what we did is that we double crocheted with the yellow and we can't finish that stitch. We drop it, we bring up purple and then purple single crochets in and then the yellow is on top of the line. It feels, oh sorry yeah you can't finish that stitch remember you have to um, on the final pull it has to be the color that you wanna make the next stitch. So in this case it will be yellow and that's double crochet. So there's gonna be a lot of changing of the yarns going back and forth as you're going around. So if you see how this is kinda of loose here that means that when I did that last one I cannot get that to be tighter because I've got that stuck. So what I want to do is that I'm just undo that, pull it out in a perfect tutorial I would never show this but you just wanna pull on it and then it will get tight again and then redo it. 
you have to do it at this moment. You can't wait to the end of the line for something like that. Okay, so you're gonna go next. And so you end up with these. So your goal is just to keep repeating rows number two and three until this band can wrap around the hat. So that was the end of row number two again. So you turn your work and then chain up one and you get that yellow to go all the way back to the other side. So this is row number three of just single crochet so that you can get that all the way to the other side. So I want you to keep on going back and forth until you get to the band and what I'm gonna do is take you back to the original tutorial and you wanna finish it so that it looks even on the back side. So the way that the uh, ideas are joined. So you're gonna finish on row number two is your last one. So two will have this that you see and so when it's joining here and being sewn it looks like it actually belongs. So then you should have uh, pretty much of a seamless idea and I will demonstrate that in just a moment and take you back to the original tutorial. So this is how you do this band. It's actually not difficult just requires patience and you can have a completely different look and possibly even sophisticated at this moment. So then that's what it looks like. So you'll see there's one side that looks better than the other. So you have to decide what you like. Do you like that? Or do you like that? Either way, it's good to go. I'll take you back to the original tutorial and good luck and we'll see you again real soon. So we're back again and I have my band all the way complete and I've already tried it on my particular hat and now I want to bring it all together. So I'm just finishing up here. Simply just pull up onto the stitch just like so. Grab your darning needle and just uh, put your darning needle on. So, and what we wanna do is we wanna sew the two ends together, just like so. So here we go, and what I want you to do is that I just simply just want you to come across, so this is where we are, come across to the other side. Like so, we just don't wanna make sure everything's tangled up, like so. And we wanna make sure that it stays nice and flush, so we wanna make sure that there's no weird twists or turns. So a friend showed me this the other day, I was really excited about it, um, is, is a hidden seam. And what you wanna do is that when you wanna come in, you wanna come down and I always go right into the top stitches and that's what creates the seams. But she was saying to me that if you go in between just right underneath, so into the post sideways like so, it makes the, the sewing look like it's part of the stitch work. So then on the other side when you go across, same thing, you wanna come into behind the stitch, just right underneath the top and come across. So we wanna continue to do that all the way through as we come across. So we come down into the next post that's down. Like so and pull it together. And so then this side, next post and down. So I've never seen to do that before and I think it, it looks a lot better uh, for hiding you know, your seams. So now we're gonna put it onto the hat. There was uh, many fans that recommended that I don't sew the uh, the band to the hat. It doesn't say to sew the band to the hat. What I originally did on the original is that I tacked it so that it was tacked on the back right here. Okay, so if you see the underneath, you can see where I tacked it. And, uh, and then what I did is I sewed across the entire top there so that even if the hat flexes that you'll never see the entrance point. Um, and again, you can see that on the inside just like so, but that's up to you. So a fan was suggesting to me that um, today on Facebook is that you shouldn't actually, you should just scrunch up the top. It's not gonna wreck your hat. Put your band over top so that if you feel like you need to change color at some point, you can just simply just change the band off to a different band. And now we have to just shape it at this point. So you can tack it if you wish. So I just gotta just take my time, just start reshaping it back out. No big deal. And there is the band so far. So it's pretty cool. So now it's up to us to accessorize it. And when you accessorize it, you actually attach it to the band. You can actually go right through to the hat if you wish, if you really wanna make it secure. 
you can also, these lines here are the single crochet. You can simply just do a single crochet line across the top if you don't like that edging. Very, very simple. But now it's up to me to accessorize and I have something up my sleeve that I want to share with you and it's actually not even crocheted. It's just a, something I found in my box of decorations here at home. So here is my sleeve of tricks. I found some beads. I found actually, <laughs> this was actually a Halloween tree that I cut some of the tr uh, branches off and then some Christmas ribbon and I wired it all together just like you see. And what I want to do is that I want to slip this chunk of wire here in underneath the band like so. And what I want to do is that I want to take the wire here that's left out and I want to stick it right through to the hat. Just like that. And the other side is through. You obviously don't want to hurt your head with this stuff on the inside but I want to wire it nicely and tight to the hat. So coming back up on the inside. Okay so now I have both wires are all the way through so I just want to pull it as tight as I possibly can to the hat. And I want to twist tie it. And I want to point this in the up direction and really press it up against the ceiling here. And voila. So now here's what we can just do is that we can just fluff up this area. We can just spread out some of these branches just like so. And voila, you would have a really amazing, the green actually helps make it pop. You know, some Christmas ribbons. If you see anything weird going on, you can always shape things. You can always add a little more if you wish. But voila, there would be your fun little hat to wear. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this project as much as I have.